was in a chat group the other day and they were asking me a ton of questions. Um, one of the questions that seemed to, uh, that everyone really enjoyed and, and thought uh, resonated with them, that they were like, oh my God, that makes so much sense, that they, they felt like it was some, you know, revelation. Um, clearly they haven't been watching my videos, but they asked me, what do you think are the three most important things when it comes to weight loss or fitness or, you know, being healthy? What are, what are like the three biggest mistakes people make? So my, the first and the biggest mistake people make is trying to do an overly restrictive diet, you know, and you can be overly restrictive in the kinds of foods that you eat. Like you're never going to eat a carb again, or you're never going to eat fat again, or you're never going to eat protein again, like whatever it might be, you never drink alcohol again, like whatever. Trying to be super overly restrictive in the kinds of food you eat, or another way to do it is being overly restrictive in the time that you eat. Well, I'm going to fast for 72 hours, only drinking water, and then eat on the fourth day. Or I'm going to fast all day and only eat from 1 to 5 p.m. Like whatever it is, there's lots of different ways to be overly restrictive. Or, you know, people say, I'm never going to eat after 7 p.m. Or I'm never going to eat sweets or candy again. Never going to eat processed foods again. Okay, they're very, very restrictive. The problem with very restrictive diets, according to science and all of these research studies that we have now that I've talked about a million times in all of my super long lectures, is that the adherence is low. You might be able to do that for a month or two, maybe three, but all the studies they've looked at with people who are doing very overly restrictive types of dieting, definitely in six months or around the nine month mark, they're all back to eating the way they were. And because they didn't learn how to eat within a calorie limit and they learn how to eat just super restrictive, they end up gaining their weight back because they weren't given the tools and didn't learn how to actually eat what they enjoy eating. So my biggest thing is you have to eat what you enjoy, just a lot less of it. If there's one thing I tell my patients and you hear me over and over again, all the students that have rotated with me have heard this, eat what you like. It just has to be a lot less. Look at the Leslie diet. Search search Dr. Allo Leslie diet. I told Mr. Leslie, I was like, listen, Mr. Leslie. He asked me, he's like, Dr. Allo, what's the best diet for me? The best diet for you is the Leslie diet. It's what you've been eating for the last 40 years. You need to eat that for the next 20 to 30 years. Eat what you like. It just has to be a lot less. All of your cardiovascular risk factors, inflammatory markers, health markers, all of those improve with weight loss alone, regardless of what you're eating. So just eat what you enjoy. Just make it less. The second biggest mistake people make is trying to adopt some overly excessive exercise program. They want to hit the gym seven days a week or five days a week, and they want to lift weights for two hours, then run for three hours, then do that. People, if you can't do that for the rest of your life, don't start because you're, that's helping you create a calorie deficit. Let's say you're burning two to 300 calories a day with whatever excessive exercise you're doing and you're, you're losing weight. But what happens when you stop doing that and you can't do it anymore? You know, you, you get to your 50s and 60s and 70s and you're not doing that anymore. You're going to gain weight back because you didn't learn how to eat within a calorie deficit with food alone. So I always tell people, pick an activity that you enjoy do it for your health. Your cardiovascular markers improve. Cardiovascular mortality improves. Your blood pressure goes down. Your insulin resistance goes down. Your diabetes improves. All that stuff improves with activity, almost regardless of what the activity is. You could do wrestling with your kids. You could do or go on a bike ride with the kids. You could do walking, hiking, anything, swimming, aerobics, Pilates, yoga, whatever activity you enjoy will improve your cardiovascular health and longevity. No questions about it. So pick something you enjoy and do it at a frequency that you can do for the rest of your life. Just if you walk every Monday, walk every Monday. You can do that for the rest of your life, but you need to create a calorie deficit with your actual calories, with your actual food. It's very easy to control calories in, very difficult to control calories out. Like I said, 5% of your daily energy expenditure is movement or exercise, purposeful exercise. Very hard to increase that past that three to five uh, percent. So just do something you enjoy. The rest of your calorie intake is what you can control. Just cut it, just cut it and you'll be fine. Um, the third biggest mistake that I stress the most, and this causes 
behavioral issues, psychological issues, eating disorders. The biggest, the third and biggest one is having a bad relationship with food. I can't tell you how many times I'm, I'm somewhere with some friends and somebody looks at me and goes, you're eating ice cream? You're eating that? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, isn't that bad for you? No. It, I'm within my calorie limit. I can eat two scoops of ice cream tonight. No big deal. I'll still lose weight. I'll still be shredded. Uh, my cholesterol will be down. My blood pressure will be down. Whatever. All of that improves with weight loss alone, regardless of how you achieve the weight loss. I like to stress that because it's true. And in my long lectures, you can read all those studies. Go to my three-hour lecture on weight loss or any of the other ones. That, um, no matter how you lose the weight, if the weight is coming off, all of your health markers, inflammatory markers, all that stuff improves. I don't like when people label food as inherently good or inherently bad. Pizza, ice cream, pop, they're not bad. They're just a combination of macronutrients that maybe you don't like. They're maybe mostly fat and carbs or they're mostly this or mostly that. It doesn't matter. If you need carbs to because you're working out and you're trying to gain muscle or, you're, or whatever, or you just need a few carbs because you're still trying to lose weight and you have like you know, 150 carbs left over that day, you can eat a Pop-Tart. Really, you can. It makes you happy. It keeps you going. You don't get depressed about your food choices. You don't feel bad. You don't feel guilty. You feel energized. If I eat a Pop-Tart or whatever it might be that I enjoy, I feel good. It releases endorphins. I feel great and it keeps me going. Same thing with healthy food. Kale and quinoa, it's a combination in the kale. For kale, for example, it's fiber and air and water, mostly. Um, maybe a little bit of carb and maybe some protein. And quinoa is, you know, carbs and mostly uh, some protein. But point is, that's not inherently healthy. It can be if you're losing weight eating that and all your health markers are improving. But it's not inherently healthy. So anyways, I go over all this stuff uh, in all of my lectures and studies. You can, you should grab my book. If you want like a definitive guide or a definitive like resource with links to every single one of these studies that I talk about, like literally a link to every single study. Um, it's a great, great resource. It's worth it for just the links alone and it costs less than five bucks. So go get it.